Hi, I'm Carlin Borisenko. In early 2020, I was the knitting Democrat who accidentally went viral on the internet for going to a Trump rally and then left the party. I became the conservative darling, was on all the shows, traveled around the country, and then realized that conservatives were no better than Democrats. If there's one thing that I've learned, it's that both political tribes are two sides of the same coin. But it wasn't all bad. On my journey, I became obsessed with understanding the woke ideology and the culture war. I broke the story of the city of Seattle doing segregated training with its employees. How bad has this stuff become? The city of Seattle has now put out, I'm not kidding you. This is according to Dr. Carolyn Borisenko, who's an organizational psychologist. The city of Seattle asked its white employees to voluntarily spend a day off in a training about their internalized racial superiority. I broke the story that led to the first ever federal lawsuit against critical race theory in the schools. I broke the Coke Be Less White story, one of the biggest anti-woke stories of all time. It got over 30 million views. Coca-Cola's corporate headquarters even had to change their outgoing voicemail. Throughout the past few days, you may have seen inaccurate reporting on the content of our recently launched diversity, equity, and inclusion training program. I exposed the schools in Burlington, Vermont for grooming middle school children live on the internet. They called me an unwoke cult leader for that. And the Vermont Human Rights Commission slandered me publicly as being a hate channel. I even got called a hero in Breitbart for exposing that the Washington Post was writing a hit piece on Christopher Rufo. I have broken story after story after story about what's going on in the public schools, from Cambridge, Massachusetts, to autistic sex education, to the Department of Education in Michigan, literally training teachers all over the state how to groom children. I wrote a book called Actively Unwoke, the ultimate guide for fighting back against the woke insanity in your life. I host a podcast all about fighting back, and I'm downloading all of my knowledge to you on my substack, carlin.substack.com. The world is a crazy place. We are literally surrounded by cults on all sides. On this show, we're going to do a deep dive into all aspects of the culture war, and I will show you the dark dystopian underbellies on both sides. Here are the commitments I'll make to you. I will always tell you the truth. I will always bring you receipts. And if you stick with me, I promise you will see the world differently. Welcome to the cult. Please mount that like button for me and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Well, hello, hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to The Cult. The Cult is a show that I stream round about five o'clock on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on this here YouTube channel, on Odyssey, on Rockfin, on Rumble, on Twitter, maybe a couple other places as well. On Saturdays, we go live at 6 p.m. for Socialism Saturday because it's my weekend too, and that extra time is uh, nice for me on a, on a weekend. And what we do on this show is we do deep dives into all aspects of the culture war, from everything from the farthest of the far left to the farthest of the far right. We watch what they're doing. We watch what they're saying. We analyze it more than I think most other people on the internet do. And we talk about it and we break it down in plain English to help you understand what's going on in the world around you at any given time. Now, although I do cover both sides of the culture war, and I generally think that both sides are crazy, you know, the socialists will tell you that I'm a right wing lunatic, a right wing conservative and alt right Nazi, all this stuff. Fact of the matter is, is I think that the alt right and the, the far right are just as crazy as the <laughs> as the as the socialists left. Um, I think everyone is insane except for us. The reason that we do spend more time on the left on this channel is because the woke left is far, 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 far more dangerous than the woke right. And yes, I did say the woke right because woke can exist on the left and it can exist on the right because how I define woke is it is an authoritarian ideology that tells you what you're allowed to think, what you're allowed to say, what you're allowed to create, um, how you're able to show up in the world. It tries to control you. It tries to rob you of your individuality. It tries to rob you of your authenticity. And so that can exist on both the left and the right. We are not in a battle of left versus right. We are not in a battle of Democrat versus Republican. We are not in a battle of conservative versus progressive. We are in a battle of authoritarian versus libertarian. And that's why I define woke as authoritarianism. When you're actively unwoke, you are actively 
unauthoritarian. How cool is that? If you're confused about that, head over to my Substack, which is Carlin, K-A-R-L-Y-N dot Substack dot com. Again, that is Carlin, K-A-R-L-Y-N dot Substack dot com. You can find the link in the description or a profile or wherever you might be watching from. And I do actually have a new article on the Substack called What Does Socialism Have to Do With Woke? This is part of my Woke 101 series that I do on the Substack, breaking down the aspects of the culture war in plain English, things that I wish people had told me when I got accidentally thrown into this space over almost four, almost four effing years ago now. There were so many things that I wish I had understood when I got thrown into the culture war, almost like like having no idea what was going on. And so the Woke 101 series on my Substack is where I try to break down just like basic questions that people might have when they're just waking up to what the woke ideology is or they're, they, they're like looking around, they're like, everyone is going insane in the world. Yes, everyone is going insane in the world, but there is a there is a method to their madness and I will break it down and help you understand it. We've got this article about what does socialism have to do with woke where I break down how there is woke on the right and woke on the left, but the woke on the left is actually significantly more dangerous, which is why we have to pay a little bit more attention to it. And then I help you draw the direct connection via language and dialect, which is what we're going to be paying attention to today, between what we see on the far, far left when we're watching socialism on this channel and what is showing up in terms of talking points of progressives, talking points of teachers, talking points of educators, talking points of librarians, talking points of the Democratic Party themselves, because there is a direct connection if you follow the language from the far left into the world as most experience it today. There is a direct connection between what's going on in the far left socialist uh, space and what is going on with the Democratic Party today. And I explained that in that article on the Substack. And that actually leads directly into what we're going to be doing today, because a lot of you have been cajoling me to watch Tick History. Now, those of you who have been around my channel for a while, you know that I don't watch other creators. I really don't. Um, not even people who are doing like similar things to what I do. Um, and, and I really kind of like, I, it's only through the help of my audience that I even know what other people are talking about. The reason that I don't watch other creators is twofold. Number one, I'm really effing busy. And so like, it's just, it, 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 I can't, I can only do so many things at one time. I don't have the time to wade into what other creators are doing, but more so than that, I really don't want to be influenced by other creators. I want my perceptions about what's going on in the world to emerge purely based on the content from the left and quite frankly, the right that I'm consuming, doing deep dives into primary sources, stuff like that. So when I start getting a whole bunch of other voices in my head saying, here's what's going on, here's what's going on, here's what's going on, here's what's going on. And I don't have the time to go and investigate all of their sources. It just starts to muddy things up for me. And I want to have a very distinct perspective about how I'm going about my analysis of what's going on in the world. And so because of that, I am really like, I don't spend time watching other creators because it does kind of muddy things up. However, every once in a while, my audience will tell me, Carlin, you need to watch this. You need to watch this. You need to watch this. And eventually I'll go, okay, well, if I'm going to watch something, I'm going to do it on a stream with friends. And that way, at least I can, I can rationalize it and say it's productive. Tick History is one of those um, creators that I have quite literally never watched Tick History. The only reason I know about Tick History is because my audience keeps haranguing me to watch Tick History. And someone, and I apologize, who, I, I forget who sent this to me, um, but someone did DM me this specific video, and it's called The Cult Many Are In But Don't Realize It. And the description is, this video explains the cult of the dialectic embraced by Marxists fascists, and national socialists. This includes the an explanation of dialectic materialism and historical materialism using primary and secondary sources. And so I actually thought that this video was would be great for us to watch together. Trendelin, it was you. 
I think someone else might have sent me this video, Trendle, but I know that you mentioned Tick History specifically. So uh, multiple people have mentioned Tick History to me over the past couple of months. And so um, I'm, I'm so thank you guys for people who brought this up. This video, I think, actually does fit in well. You know, I have recently started coming out and saying just really directly, I believe socialism is a cult. I really do. Socialism is a weird ecosystem um, in which in which socialists when they're like i mean really on the far left we're not talking about democratic socialists because democratic socialists aren't really the real far left no matter what people on the right think they're really not um there are much farther left people than them and um so when you get into like real socialism it is a cult it is an en- it is an enclosed ecosystem where they only ever talk to each other and they only ever read each other's material and everything is about confirmation bias and affirmation within the cult of socialism. And so I really do truly believe that socialism is a cult. I think that they um, use language as a weapon to advance their cult ideology. And you know what? Normally, I would say it's your own personal business if you want to get caught up into a cult. It's not my business. It's your business, I guess. But the problem is that this cult has a lot of political power and this cult is taking over the schools and this cult is influencing kids and this cult is indoctrinating people into their ideology using publicly taxpayer funded money. And this cult is very literally pushing the country towards socialism. And so while I I, I don't particularly care, seriously, bro, seriously. We're already going to ban you. Not worth it. Guys, as a as a reminder, there is no shit posting allowed in my chat. Don't be a dick. Do not insult me. Do not insult other people in the chat. I can do whatever the fuck I want. You break my rules, you will get banned just like Twisted Jack just did. Um and no whining if I tell you to stop doing something, just stop doing it. I really though shouldn't have to tell people don't come into someone's chat and just start insulting them. Like it's kind of like if you walked into my house and you just started calling me names in my house. Like, go fuck yourself. Get out. Um, anyway, so we're going to watch this video from Take History today. And we're going to talk about it. And I'm excited because a lot of people have told me to watch Take History. And I'm excited to kind of check it out. See what it's about. And of course, we'll do that with friends. So I appreciate you all being here. Before we get into that, just a couple quick things. Number one please do make sure you are subscribed to my Substack. Even if it's just a free account, that's totally okay. You're allowed to subscribe for free. Most of the content on my Substack is free. Um, But if you do want to support the work I'm doing, please go ahead and sign up for $8 a month or $80 a year. That helps keep me in business. Yes, Randall Scott also proposed it, uh, Judy, but I think there was also someone else in my... I got this in a Twitter DM earlier. So maybe maybe it came from a variety of places. I'm not going to... um, I, I can't thank everyone at all times. So thank you guys if you sent me Tick History. I can't remember everyone who has, but several people have. Anyway, please make sure you are signed up on my Substack if you do want to support the work I'm doing. It is $8 a month, $80 a year. I am completely 100% funded by you. What that means is my only obligation is to be honest and to bring you receipts and to show you what's going on. And, um, and I'm completely beholden to you. And I hope I do earn your support through the work that I'm doing, including doing things like breaking down the woke ideology in plain English, including doing things like exposing the president of the American Library Association again for the second time within the last month because last week we did a supporter-only spy stream infiltration for a full-day librarian conference and I got Emily Drabinsky on tape again saying that Emily does not believe that librarians can be politically neutral. That's very interesting when it, when you consider that libraries are taxpayer funded and the head of the American Library Association is flat out saying that libraries can't be politically neutral. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? It's also especially interesting when we look at the clip that I got of Emily at the socialism conference like three weeks ago in which Emily said that libraries need to be sites of socialist organizing. And now she's telling a group of librarians at a, at a private conference that library li- li- librarians can't be politically neutral. 
I just think those things are interesting. Guys, that is original journalism that you are not going to get anywhere else. And it is only possible when you support the work I'm doing. Again, you can sign up on my Substack for $8 a month or $80 a year. You can also support my work by sending in super chats. You can become a YouTube channel member. You can join my locals community. You can join my Patreon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I do prefer uh, support through the Substack just because that's my primary content hub on the internet. I really do appreciate it. I also want to point out that supporters are going to be getting another special exclusive live stream this week. We're spy streaming again on Thursday. I'm not telling you what it is. I can't tell you what it is. Um, I will tell you that it is not as long as the one we did last week. This one's going to start in the afternoon. It's only going to be a couple hours. And this one has nothing to do with libraries. It has to do with transing of the kids. That's the only hint you're going to get. This is another supporter exclusive infiltration. I announced it in my Unwoke Roundup newsletter yesterday. More information will be coming on that pretty soon. But essentially, spy stream is when I go inside a live woke training and we record it and we talk about it. And if anything significant comes out of it, because not everything is always significant, but if something significant comes out of it, we make clips about it and stuff like that to show people what's really going on when these people think that we are not listening to them. And so that's going to be coming up on Thursday. Instead of a normal stream, we are going to be doing a, a supporter exclusive spy stream. So you do have to be signed up either as a paying member of my Substack, of my locals, of my Patreon, a YouTube channel member, or a Twitter subscriber before Thursday. And I will send out the links on that. And I hope we're going to have a grand old time. I think it's going to be fun. Spy stream is always pretty great. And um, I appreciate the support coming up for that. I also want to let people know that next week on October 4th, I will be doing a live webinar. This is not to be confused with what I do on YouTube. This is a webinar in a private training environment in which I'm going to download a basic introductory overview of how to speak socialist. You know, I've been doing interviews all over the place ever since I infiltrated the socialism conference. And I've been really excited to um, get feedback from people about how they're responding to this. And people are really taking this seriously. And it, it really it warms my heart. It really does. Because I felt like I've been screaming into the ether for years on this, if I'm honest about it, and people haven't been listening. And now all of a sudden, people are. And one of the questions that people are asking is, what can I do to fight back against what they're doing? And my first answer is has been the same. You have to learn how to speak their language. You know, when I started uh, teaching people how to fight back against the woke left about three years ago now, I, I, was, I wrote a whole book about it. It's called Actively Unwoke, The Ultimate Guide for Fighting Back Against the Woke Insanity in Your Life. And you can get a, you can get a copy of the book. Link is in the description below. It's on Amazon, um, you know, hardcover, Kindle, audio version, whatever you want. My point is this. When I wrote my book, I filled my book with tactics, okay? I said, here are checklists of things you can do to fight back against the left. And I still stand by everything I wrote in that book. I think my book is great. I think my book has helped a lot of people and I'm really proud of it. I think the problem is um, I didn't do a good job of really teaching the language and how the language shows up in the world. And I think the reason that I did that is I was still learning when I wrote my book, right? So I was focused on tactics, but I wasn't necessarily as as tuned in as I am now to the language. In the last year, I've just been doing deep dive after deep dive after deep dive into socialism. I have become fluent in socialist. And it is incredible how much starts to show up for you when you become fluent in socialist. And I know a lot of my community members can say the same things. The ones that have been around for most of Socialism Saturday since we started it over a year ago. When you start learning how to speak socialist, you start seeing what the woke left is doing to our culture in a completely new way. And it's even more terrifying than most of you can even imagine because of how they're using language as a weapon. So it's not the tactics aren't good. It's not the tactics aren't appropriate, but I want to take a step back and start really getting information out there that will help people to learn how to speak socialist. So this is a free event. It does not cost you anything. 
go to the website, carlin.substack.com. I pin the link to the top of the chat. I'll put it in again. I will also put the link over on Rumble in case anyone is over there. Hello, Rumble. It's good to see you guys. Make sure you are signed up for this free webinar. It is on October 4th. This is going to be a basic introductory class to how to speak socialist. It's not going to teach you everything, but it's going to give you a good general overview that would really speed up your learning. And especially if you come to Socialism Saturdays on Saturdays at 6 p.m., you're going to start to see the world in a whole new way. And I'm actually really thrilled because since I launched this webinar two days ago, I launched it on Socialism Saturday. There are over 160 people already signed up for this webinar, and I am thrilled about that. I really am. I'm thrilled at the response. I've never seen people sign up for a webinar this quickly. And and I've been doing webinars a long time, not just about this stuff, but about like, you know, organizational psychology, stuff like that. Now the webinar is completely free, but, but I do have it set up so that you can make a donation to support the work I'm doing. Only if you want to, though. If you can't afford it, don't worry about it. And I want to thank everyone that has signed up and has made a donation because actually a lot more of you have been doing that than I would have thought. Um, but it, the webinar is completely free. It will be recorded. So if you are if you are not able to make it to the live class, sign up anyway, and you will get a link to the on-demand recording after it being finished. And based on the response I've already gotten, guys, I can tell you this will not be the last time I hold a live training like this. So don't, if for some reason you can't make it or the seats sell out, I'm absolutely convinced that I'm going to run out of space. Don't worry about it. There's going to be more in the future. But if you want to have a, an opportunity to learn this stuff, make sure you sign up now and I will teach you how to speak socialist, at least give you a good introductory overview. And um, I think we're all going to have a great time with it. And I do try to make it fun, even though it's a heavy topic. I do try to make it fun. Um, we do the best we can. Let's see. I just have a couple of chats I want to respond to. Nurse says, I did order your book. Thank you for that. I really do appreciate it. Daniel says, how could I further support the channel? I love this channel. I'm learning a lot. Thank you, Daniel. Um, again, the best way to support the channel is by making sure you're a paying member of the Substack, which is $8 a month, $80 a year. Um, and then just showing up, sharing my work, putting my work out there. That would be um, that would be really fantastic because I rely on you guys to share my work with your friends, your family. The reason I'm creating so much content on the Substack is because I want to um, I want to give you resources that you can share out there, what, not only to help you understand it, but to help other people understand it as well. With this this problem starts to go away, guys, when people start talking about it. I promise you. Um, but it's not going to get better if people aren't sharing the information. So I'm doing my part. I'm doing all I can to equip you guys, and I hope you do your part and you pass it on. And I do appreciate the support. Um, you guys keep me in business, and I I really can't do it without you. All right, guys. With that preamble. Let's get into our video for today. We are watching Tick History, talking about the cult dialect of socialism and national socialists and stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to this introduction to this channel that I haven't gotten yet. This video is about 40 minutes long, so it should be done by the time I have to go to my community Zoom call at 7 p.m. By the way, guys, if you're signed up as a supporter on the Substack or on any of the other platforms, we do do a supporter call every Monday at 7 p.m. You're more than welcome to come and join us, but we got to wrap this video up before then. Please do mount that like button for me. There's a shocking discrepancy between the number of people watching right now and the number of people who've mounted that like button. So please go ahead and do that. Let's get into it. This is Take History, the cult many are in, but don't realize it. The man behind the curtain is a priest. The curtain obscures the fact that what you're looking at is a religion. And everyone comes away thinking that it's a science. No, it's not. When you pull back the curtain, you're left with religion. And the curtain is called the dialectic. Dialectic is a process of obscuring the fact that you're dealing with a religion. And it's also the process oh, of that tricking you into believing in this religion. True. Now, the Marxists will screech and say that Tick doesn't understand because Karl Marx said in Das Kapital that it's not a religion. <laughs> They don't believe in gods, and they are purely material. Das Kapital. But it is a religion. And I don't care what the curtain says. It's a religion, and I'm going to prove it. But it's. I'm not entirely sure, and maybe I will have my mind changed in the course of this video. I don't... I classify socialism as a cult. I don't believe that cult is the same as religion. 
I believe that religion can be cults. There are absolutely religious cults out there. I'm not saying those don't exist. I just don't think by virtue of being a religion, something is necessarily a cult. I think that cults, one of the reasons that I define socialism as a cult is because it has this very insulated community in which members of the cult only communicate with other members of the cult and only consider ideas from the cult. And they're literally afraid of everyone outside the cult. And so I'm going to call it a cult for the moment. I'm not convinced of it being a religion yet, but maybe I'll be convinced. It's not just Marx, it's Mosley, Mussolini, and Hitler as well. They all believe in this religion, and they all use the dialectic to obscure the fact that it is a religion. The dialectic explains why, when you read their books, a lot of the time it sounds really strange. When you're reading Das Kapital or Mein Kampf, you're thinking, why has he written it like that? Why is he not using normal language? And the dialectic explains it. Anyone who believes in the dialectic writes really badly. And the yes, reason why do. is because their objective is not to explain, it's to obscure. That's because socialists speak in a coded language. Socialists write in a language that is only decipherable to other socialists. That is why the number one thing that we can all do in order to fight back against socialism is to learn their language. And by the way, this is just like an extra bonus. Socialists get so pissed off when you learn how to speak their language because they can't get shit by you anymore. Like I've gotten in straight arguments with socialists where they try throwing all their socialist language at me. And then and then I start actually spitting back their ideology better than they know their own ideology. And it pisses them off. And it is so beautiful. So socialists get pissed. When you start learning their language, that is like the number one reason to do it because they can't hide anything from you anymore once you learn how to speak their language. They are the curtain that pulls itself in front of the priest. So in order to explain this, I have to remind you of what this religion is. James Lindsay has once again explained this brilliantly in a series of lectures on YouTube. I will post links to those lectures below. They are by far the best explanations I've seen of this, so I'm going to encourage you to watch them at the end of the video to get another perspective on this. So let's just start from the foundations. The faithful of this religion believe that there is a true God that's not material. It's not physical, it's purely spiritual. It's the absolute idea, or the spirit, or whatever you want to call it. But they also believed that there was a split in the heavens. And from this split, you get shards of the true God cast into the ether. The demiurge, the devil, then creates the material realm, this world we inhabit, as a prison for the shards of the true God. So if you think about the Matrix, we're all in this fantasy world that's not real, we just think it is. And Agent Smith, the demiurge, is trying to prevent us from realizing what we are. We are God. We don't know we're God, but if we realize that we are, we will see. Well, that's actually a bastardization of like a generalized spiritualist belief. Now, that not everything that he said lines up with generalized spiritualist beliefs, but like what he just described is a bastardization of like what many people here in the chat believe. And I'm sorry we're not part of a cult because it's a bastardization of what the ideology is, but okay see the code in the matrix and win. But what this means is that the material world and every single one of us in it are shards of the idea. Yes. God. And God's purpose, our purpose, I believe is that. to come back together as one and yep. realize God that we source, are God. The one true energy. Yep. In effect, God is trying to remember that he is God. Well, so how do we remember exactly. that we are God? Not exactly. Well, the okay. way we do that is through understanding, knowledge, divine gnosis, that God is non-material. He's there. Okay, for so he's making the Gnostic argument. I fucking hate the Gnostic argument. Again, I am a, like I I I'm a generalized spiritualist. I am woo woo. I believe in a lot of this stuff. And Gnostic means hidden knowledge, and none of this is hidden. None of this is hidden. Like, the, like it, it drives me goddamn crazy. 
And I'm like, he might have very good points coming up and I'm keeping an open mind, but like, it drives me goddamn crazy when people who do not understand generalized spiritualist beliefs are like, it's Gnostic, it's Gnostic, it's Gnostic, it's Gnostic. It's... No, it's not fucking Gnostic. There's nothing Gnostic about it. Everyone has access to this information that is quite literally what people like me believe. But these people don't understand it because most of them are atheists, which is fine. I'm not judging their ability to be an atheist. But yeah, Lindsay gets this argument wrong too. Guys, the Gnostic argument is bullshit. I'm sorry. Everyone who I've heard made this argument gets it completely wrong. And none of them are generalized spiritualists that exist in spiritualist communities or have talked to actual spiritualists, which is why none of them effing understand what it means. This is not hidden knowledge. I'm a little disappointed this is starting out in this direction, honestly. Well, purely an idea. The idea. So we need knowledge, divine gnosis, of this idea. Hence, the religion is called Gnosticism, or maybe Hermeticism, which is similar. When we realize that we are God, that part is Gnosis, and our pursuit of knowledge will lead us to the idea, so our objective is to acquire knowledge of God Gnosticism. No. And how that do is we not gain this knowledge of God? Through that is not the objective. The objective is experience. The meaning of life is to experience. That is what it is. By virtue of experiencing yourself, you become more familiar with what God is. But the, the purpose is not to become familiar with what God is and to know that you are God. The purpose of life is experience. Yeah. I'm a Tibetan Buddhist and I'm trained in the tantric track and that is considered hidden knowledge because you have to study other stuff first. These generalizations are trash. Gnosticism is gay. Exactly. Through the dialectic. The dialectic presents itself as logic. It presents itself as a science. It is neither. It is alchemy. It is magic. It is nonsense. Yet it's also what some people believe because it's also a religious faith. When a Marxist says that they're not religious or that they don't believe in mysticism, then why are they believing in the dialectic? The dialectic is mysticism. The dialectic is a religion. The purpose of the dialectic is to A, that. obscure that this is a religion, and B, create a heaven on earth so you can become God. That is no. literally the purpose of the dialectic. Wrong. So the fact that Marxists believe in the dialectic at all is proof that this is a religion. Marx may have denied it and claimed otherwise, but his actions speak louder than words. You don't even understand what you're talking about, bro. That the unification of God will occur at the end of history. Because once God is created, once all the shards become God again, then there's no need for history. But what is... That's only true... When you don't understand that the purpose of life is experience, there is no beginning, there is no end. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. The fact that you think there's going to be some end point to this indicates nothing more than you don't understand what you're talking about. It's history. History is the study of the human condition via the records of the past. It is not the study of the past itself. It is the study of the records of the past, which is not the same thing. But Fair even enough. if it was the study of the past, it's definitely not the study of the future. I know well, I shouldn't yeah. have to state this, but history is not the future. <laughs> and uh. you can't declare an end to history, nor can you use history to predict the future. And yet that's precisely what the dialectics are doing. Theirs is an end of history cult, a doomsday cult. I don't Some agree Some technical that. terms, apocalypticism, a religious belief that the end of the world is imminent, and the word eschaton is the technical term for the end of the world or the end times. Eric Vogelin famously warned everyone not to imminentize the eschaton, meaning don't bring about an acceleration of the end of the world, which is precisely what the dialectics are trying to do. I don't agree with Let's that. Let's take Marxism as an example. Stalin, in his book Dialectical and Historical Materialism, 
explains that the purpose of the proletarian party and and, and by the way guys i'm not suggesting that i don't think that marxism is a death cult because i do think marxism is a death cult i just do not agree with his analysis we might end up in roughly the same place but we might get there like in completely different ways and again like this is It drives me goddamn crazy when people who do not understand generalized spiritualist beliefs talk about them like they understand it. Because for people like me who have been studying and practicing this stuff for 20 years, it is so the things that they say are so ridiculous and are just blown out misinterpretations of what it is based on the fact that they have not fully investigated what they're talking about drives me goddamn crazy so i'm not saying that i don't think that marxism is a death cult because i do think marxism is a death cult but i don't agree with anything else this guy has said so far and i'm really disappointed by that because a lot of people recommended i watch this rottweiler said what people get uh get wrong is the epistemological aspect of Gnostic or agnostic. Gnostic is asserting truth and absolute knowledge, which Marxists do. Well, sure, but that doesn't make them Gnostic. (laughs) I mean, it's like, Jesus Christ. Brooklyn, you know what I'm talking about. It's like Brooklyn studied in India with like, like, like fame fucking yogis. Like (laughs) the people that know this shit, know this shit. Take action to destroy the reactionary forces, seize the means of production, and thereby accelerate the process of history. The others have the same idea too, and we'll come back to them a little later. So the purpose of the process of the dialectic is to get to the end of history and unite as God. I don't agree with that. That's why when Marx or anyone else claims that they're not a religion, they're talking out their rears. I've never heard Mark. What they're trying to do like is immanentize the eschaton. I don't think they're that's trying true. to bring about the end of history. I don't think that's true. I mean, how is that not a religion? They say that they, we have been listening to the farthest left activists and organizers for over a year on this channel, multiple times a year, dozens of hours of content a week. And I've never heard any of them say stuff like this. So is this a secret plan? that only some of them know about at like at what levels do they learn about this secret plan is it like is it like in scientology where socialists get up to a high level like level 14 in scientology and then they go into the secret room with the briefcase and they understand the true plan because i've been listening to some of the most impactful socialist organizers on the far left for over a year and i've never heard any of them talking like this at all so this just seems like really made up and out of left field for me and i don't give a flying fuck what the academic literature says i don't give a fuck what marx wrote about what i care about is what are people actually doing in the real world today What are real socialists doing? What are real socialists talking about? What are they really training people on? How are they teaching each other? What are they saying to each other when, when, when they're, the doors are closed and, and, and people like us aren't listening. What you're talking about is going back into the history of the literature and cherry picking things from people who are now dead, who are no longer on this earth to say, here is what it is. And it is a death cult. Like we might actually agree that it's a death cult, but we think this for completely different reasons i would just like is this not hinged into reality at all that would be a little disappointing trying to get to a utopia but then claim it's not yep. a utopia it's not that doesn't they mean say heaven. the state will wither away as they call for more state Mar- utopia does not mean a heaven utopia does not mean an end times it means they believe the world will be a more ideal place when they abolish capitalism and usher in their Marxist utopia. It is the heaven on earth. It is not the end of history. It is not the end times. Jesus Christ. Marx claimed it wasn't an ideology, when it's clearly an ideology. It's all complete nonsense. So don't look at what they say, look at what they do. This is a doomsday I'm looking cult, at what they do. I don't think simple. you are, but I am. So with their intention of getting to the end of history, it's a unite as God, they've decided that the best way to do this is to accelerate the development of society. Now, I would say, okay, if you want society to develop, we therefore need to get rid of the chains of slavery, the chains of feudalism, the chains of taxation, regulation, and inflation. 
all of which hinder the development of society. If we're not enslaved, then we would function so much better, and thus progress could Correct. be achieved. I agree. But that's not what they mean by development of society. Remember, their aim is to get to the end no, of history. Wrong. That's and not what their does aim. That mean? That's not their aim. The you made that shit up. Mankind. You made that shit up. They are a doomsday cult. And what they're trying to do is destroy mankind. No, that is not true at all. That is your interpretation of what they're trying to do. Marxists and socialists and communists genuinely believe that their version of the world, a world without capitalism, is going to be better for all people. They believe that. They do not think they're in a doomsday cult. They are not trying to get to the end of history. They strongly believe that they are creating a world in which human beings can flourish. That is why they're doing what they're doing. James Jones says, to socialists and Marxists, the absolute idea is socialism and Marxism. They say it's the end goal of all the thesis and, anti and antithesis uh, synthesis. Well, yeah, I mean, their goal is to get rid of capitalism and to create a world built on Marxism, but it's not to bring about the end of history. That is stupid. They think that once they have the revolution, people are going to be thriving and it's going to be so much better and there might be a little pain getting there, but life is going to be better for people. They're going to have the resources they need. They're going to have be taken care of, stuff like that. They really do believe that. Now, of course, that's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. But that doesn't mean they don't believe it because they are in a cult that is constantly reinforcing this ideology to say that this is the only way. This is how human beings will thrive. This is how human beings will flourish and stuff like that. They are in a cult that is reinforcing that Marxism is a really good idea. Kind. Communism didn't fail in Cambodia. It succeeded. And the death toll shows that. That's they not what want to accelerate the process of the end of... Then why are they quite literally writing books saying real socialism has never been tried and here are all the ways we got it wrong and we're going to do it better this time? Now, of course, they're not going to do it better. It can't be done better. It is impossible for it to be done better. But that is what they are literally talking about. Why do I know this? Like, socialists are very well aware that socialism has not gone well in the past. They they are hyper aware of it. Believe me, they have whole meetings about it. They have whole presentations about it. They have whole books about it. They just think they're going to learn from when it went badly and do it better this time. History. So they introduce the state police, gulags, mass starvation. These things are part of the process, not a mistake. This is where I disagree with James Lindsay, who said these things were mistakes. But by reading someone like Stalin, <laughs> their intent becomes obvious. Five main types of relations of production are known to history. Primitive communal, slave, feudal, capitalist, and socialist. So okay. we were all frolicking free in the Garden of Eden during primitive communism. Then we had the fall and all became slaves. But we've started to free ourselves, going from slavery to feudalism and feudalism to capitalism. We were, at least up to a point, getting freer. But what's the aim of the communists? To get us back to communism. To send us back to the Garden of Eden. Which they believe so is going to be going superior to, to capitalism. Well... It stands to reason if we were freeing ourselves as socialists quite literally believe that in enacting socialism, they are they are setting everyone free. They use the word liberate for a reason. Liberate means to free one's self of whatever you're liberating yourself from. It means to set yourself free. The socialists say in their conferences, we are not free in a world under capitalism. In a world, we are going to set people free of capitalism. We are going to liberate people from capitalism. They quite literally believe that liberty only exists without capitalism. Why do I know this and no one else does? So we were going forward through history, then to go back through history... We'd have to do the opposite. We'd have to be enslaved. So first, they'll implement a totalitarian socialist state 
then we'll have the rapture and the state will wither away at the end of history. But of course, mankind will wither away along with it. And the survivors, the priests of the cult, they don't will end up that. back in primitive communism. They don't end believe up back that. in the Garden of Eden and close to God again. That's not what they so believe. Nonsense. You made the, that the shit up. The objective is not to bring about paradise no for receipts. everyone. It's to bring a return to paradise for the priests only. No. Because they know there's only so That's much room in the Garden believe. of Eden. So the deaths and starvation in the camps are all part of the process of accelerating the destruction. Then why are socialists literally planning for communal kitchens? If starvation is a part of their plan, then why are socialists quite literally at the center of their architecting plan to get rid of the nuclear biolog biological family? Why are they quite literally planning communal kitchens in all communities to make sure that everyone has access to food? Like, this is a... Communal kitchens are a central part of abolishing the biological nuclear family, which is one of the, the the aims that socialism has, because socialists believe that you cannot get rid of capitalism without getting rid of the biological nuclear family. So they are literally planning on, they call them revolutionary socialist architects, are literally planning on how do we create communal kitchens to make sure everyone gets fed. You think they haven't learned from the past? Of course they have. They wouldn't be planning for communal kitchens if they wanted everyone to starve. Of society. In broad outline, the Asiatic, ancient, feudal, and modern bourgeois modes of production may be designated as epochs, marking progress in the economic development of society. The bourgeois mode of production is the last antagonistic form of the social process of production. But the productive forces developing within bourgeois society create also the material conditions for a solution of this antagonism. The prehistory of human society, accordingly, closes with this social formation. Let's just put that in plain language, because he doesn't speak normal. He thinks that history hasn't yet started. The prehistory of human society is the current era we are living oh, in for now. for fuck's sake. Because this is why we do not go into the academic literature. And it's not that I don't think it's valuable. I think that what James Lindsay is doing is the Lord's work. But this, this shit right here is why I only listen to what's going on in the real world. Because when you start nitpicking the academic literature, it is very, very easy to take things out of context, to make things have meanings that they don't mean. When you're listening to real people talking about their ideas and teaching other people their ideas, that is a way different thing than nitpicking a couple sentences out of a document that we don't know. Karl Marx may have debunked that later. I have no idea. I haven't read all of Marx and I'm never going to read all of Marx because F that, I'm not that crazy. But like, we don't know. I don't know where he's getting this from. I don't know what document he's getting this from. I don't know when Karl Marx wrote this. I don't know what the larger context is in him writing this. This is the danger of cherry picking stuff out of context and then not explaining where it came from. Tayton says 250k subs. People believe this this man while the real socialist believers have uh, a thousand subs. Well, yeah, I mean, it is a... Uh, but but he talks real fast and he 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 cites his sources. So, you know, I'm so disappointed in this. I've been looking forward to checking out Tick History. I am so disappointed in what I've seen so far. Because we haven't developed the true socialist society. Nope, that's not we what they believe. We haven't got to God. So history hasn't even started yet. Not what they believe. It's total nonsense. History it is the study of the records of the past. It has nothing to do with the formation of some today. mystical society. Just imagine that. how demented a mind you must have to come up with this nonsense. Imagine how demented you must be so to lie to people on the internet. Their aims, we have to realize that the priests can't do this alone. They must convince people to join the cults before they destroy us all. And how do they do that? They trick them. Now, I've got to explain this. I was a socialist back in the so day. So you should but fucking I know better. I wasn't a Marxist. Oh, okay. I had a keen eye for history and understood that Cambodia, China, and the Soviet Union were bad. And I understood that communism had failed. I had read George Orwell, who is still my favorite fiction author, but 
I was misled into believing that the workers needed external help to save them from capitalism. And that help would come from the state. So True. I was a moderate socialist for practical reasons. And it never bought into the Marxist ideology. So I never became a dialectic. Really, bro? Really? Because I haven't heard a thing in this video so far that I think is an accurate representation of what's going on in the real world. So do you have some sort of secret hidden knowledge about what this guy said? Because like he has said nothing that I agree with so far. I am completely unimpressed by this channel. And I think that people who watch Socialism Saturday on a weekly basis know far more about what the actual socialists are saying and what they're actually doing than this guy does right now. I wasn't in the cult. Therefore, I can't explain why anyone would fall for this. I'm sure there are reasons why, and I'm hopeful that there will be an ex-dialectic somewhere in the comments who can explain to us how they got in it and what it's like to be. Wasn't that supposed you know, to be what this from video was on? Of, view of a dialectic. I thought you were going to explain that, but I can't explain this. the trick. All oh, I can do okay. is so explain you're to you a video about something you don't understand. The dialectical confusion. Got it. And take some guesses as to why for money. someone would fall it. for it. Okay. So I that's understand. what I'm going to do right now. When humans come across a problem, there are so. He is fundamentally distorting what socialists believe today in the real world. And you're going to excuse that by saying he's a historian. Well, I'm sorry. What he's talking about has no fucking relevance to what is actually going on in the real world. Two potential approaches. We can either develop a theory and stubbornly stick to it. Like all the closed mind. And no matter how many times the first part of this video was almost entirely about him bastardizing what spiritualists believe. So don't tell me him that he's a historian. Well, then he should have gone back and studied a lot more history about generalized spiritual beliefs, which are thousands of years old. They are older than the Christian Bible. So why didn't he apply his historian knowledge to actually understanding what spiritualists believe before he spent the first part of this video completely bastardizing what we believe? Sometimes we fail, we just keep doing the same thing over and over again in the hope that we get a different outcome. We call this process insanity. Or there's the open-minded approach. We tried something, we failed, therefore we'll change our theory and try again. We call this process sanity. The dialectics adopt the process of insanity. And no matter how many times their theology goes wrong, They'll not change it, and they'll keep butting their heads against the brick wall, hoping this will create utopia. When normal people have an idea, let's call it a thesis, this goes up against another idea. Let's call it This is, people wonder why more people don't pay attention to my content. I'm going to explain it to you. This content is written for stupid people who are easily fooled and who just want someone to give them the answers without doing any of the work themselves. Whereas my content is much more complex, much more nuanced, requires a much higher level of pattern recognition. This is why, this is why people like this will always have more subscribers than me, always have more followers than me because they are offering up soundbite content that, that, People who are not willing to put any time in or effort in will take and lap up with a spoon, even though it is a completely inaccurate representation of what is going on because it's given to them quickly in short little sound bites that they can easily consume and not think about. Whereas my content requires a much higher degree of commitment, much higher degree of pattern recognition, much higher degree of intelligence. It's like... This is why I got this is this right here. This right here is why the world is the way it is. Well, it's an antithesis. And there can be multiple arguments, multiple theses and antitheses. But eventually, after debate and experimentation, one will be declared the winner. So 2 plus 2 equals 4 or 2 plus 2 equals 5. We have a debate and it turns out that there is a right and wrong answer. 2 plus 2 is 4, not 5. So the debate is over, there is a correct answer, and this process allows us to get to the objective truth, whatever that truth might be. Dialectics don't believe in this process. They believe that when you have a thesis and antithesis, the solution is to negate the two. They deny both the thesis and the antithesis, 
and they adopt a synthesis of the two ideas. Two plus two is not four or five, it's four and five. So therefore, two plus two is nine. Or in fact, whatever the priests, Wait. the party says it is. It can well, be four and five enough. at the same time, or it can change. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the truth is gained subjectively. It's not real. It's whatever we imagine it to be. This process of negation, this process of struggle, and the Marxists use that term too, by the way, is the natural order of things. Struggle means a perpetual revolution. Struggle does not, well, I mean, I, I suppose it does mean the natural order of things in that Marxists believe that the natural order of things is a perpetual revolution. But struggle by itself does not mean the natural order of things. This guy does not know how to speak socialist at all. I'm sorry. Struggle means the perpetual fight, the perpetual do the work, the perpetual revolution, which they believe is 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 the natural order of things. But he's not being specific in what they believe the natural order of things is. As described by the dialectics, Hegel referred to it as Aufheben, destroying something but keeping the essence of the thing so the that revolution. you can lift it up, revolution, to a higher no. plane. Marx used the same term in the so Communist close. Manifesto. Abolition, Alfie so Bung, of the family. Even the most radical flare up at this infamous proposal of the communists. When presented with a contradiction, a normal person would say that there's a problem. The abolition of the family means to liberate people from the family because they're liberating people from the family because they're liberating people from capitalism because they don't believe that they can liberate people from capitalism until they liberate people from the family. And abolition means the revolution that will overcome the family so that they can then over overcome capitalism. That's what it means, bro. Sorry. Well, we've obviously got something I'm wrong. I'm so annoyed and right now. We need to rethink it. The dialectic will embrace the contradiction. In fact, they'll say that contradictions are good. There's no contradiction. They say... There is no contradiction if you know how to speak socialist. So then maybe he should be a big boy and not make videos for a quarter million subscribers about topics that he does not know about. It's fucking irresponsible. Rottweiler, thank you for the super chat. The problem is that they have to give clear definitions because Gnosticism outside of spirituality is used for epistemic certitude. This guy is conflating both. He doesn't know his epistemology. I completely agree with you, Rottweiler. Completely agree. No, Trendelin, no, no, no. I'm not doing another video. This is going to be the video on which I judge this guy because it's the one I happen to watch. I am sorry if that upsets people, but like he is not impressing me so far. And I strongly doubt that after this live stream, I will spend any time on him ever again. Their fertile ground for progression. They reject the notion that we should figure out which argument is right and wrong and just synthesize them together so we can find the higher truth. After all, we're trying to become God, right? Now, no, what I've described not. so far no, is more like God. what Immanuel Kant would think. But Hegel took things to the next level. He said that the world wasn't what our minds perceived it to be, but that the material world is our mind. The reason why is because if we are all shards of the true God, and God is the absolute idea, then the world was created from the mind of God. Duh. Our mind. Duh. And what this does is it yes. justifies the synthesis. No. We overcome the contradictions, and that's fine because our mind... He is again distorting what generalized spiritualists believe. This is not what they believe. He is taking it and twisting it. This is not real. He is literally just making shit up. Is reality. And apparently these people can hold contradictions in their heads at the same time, which is very strange to me. It's literally insanity. Well, what I think literal insanity is making shit up on the internet. Is the coexistence me, of two contradictory sides, their conflict and their fusion into a new category. Formerly, we were in the habit of saying, this is right or wrong. Today, we must put the question accordingly. What would the Fuhrer say? 
I tell you, if the Führer wishes it, then two times two are five. Yes, when you are a dialectic, right and wrong can no longer be determined. We do not believe that collective consciousness can manifest reality. Although, I mean, well, it can manifest reality, but individual consciousness can also manifest reality. It is not just about the collective. Of course, if a lot of people believe the same thing and they are in a, a similar space, the reality, the likelihood that that thing is going to manifest in that space is much higher because you have a lot of individuals who all believe the same thing, who are all feeding into the same thing, who then create said thing. But you do not have to be part of the collective consciousness in order to manifest things. You can manifest things as an individual. you lose your ability to think because everything becomes contradictory chaos. No, nope. So your Wrong. only guide is the higher synthesis, Wrong. which is the leader, be it Stalin, Lenin, Mao, Hitler, Mussolini, Pol Pot, Mosley. It doesn't matter. Your leader, your Führer, is the only one who knows because the dialectic has destroyed your ability to think. And going back to Hegel, if the world is made from our minds, then it stands to reason that the mind is also part of the world. Yep. Therefore, both the mind and the world are material. So then, not the Marxists really. come along, Wrong. want to pretend that they're not Wrong. a religion, and therefore say Wrong. they stand for dialectical materialism. They say that the world comes first before the mind. But it's no. nothing different. Wrong. Because in their view, the world is material but the mind makes the material world. And the mind is also material, so it's a circle. <laughs> they call themselves materialists because they believe... He is very confused because he doesn't understand that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only take different forms. I cannot even with this video. I cannot even. I believe that the mind is material. It doesn't matter where they start because they end up in the same conclusion. Wrong. Therefore, they're not dealing with material things. They're dealing with fantasy. They've negated the real and embraced the actual, Wrong. which is whatever their minds are dreamt of. Wrong. Hence, socialism is converted from a dream of a better future for humanity into a science. And I know the Marxists will screech and say that Marx said this isn't what he did. He claimed he demystified the dialectic from Hegel. But it doesn't matter what Marx said, it matters what he did. He didn't He's kick obviously out the priest. an atheist. All he did was obviously draw the curtain so you can't see the priest behind it. And you it's know, literally in the name. Up. Dialectical materialism. Dialectic mind and materialism. Reality. <laughs> This is significantly worse than the whatever podcast because I had had so many people positively recommend this guy to me. They were like, everyone, like, you have to watch Tick History. You have to watch Tick History. You have to watch Tick History. No one recommended the whatever podcast to me. And if they did, they said, Carlin, you should watch the whatever podcast because it'll be really good to make fun of because they're fucking morons. I had no expectation for the whatever podcast and the whatever podcast completely met my complete lack of expectation of anything valuable from that format. Why I am angry here is that a lot of people recommended this guy to me and this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. And there's nothing wrong with being an atheist except when you assholes start to bastardize face and beliefs that you don't know about and have not bothered to investigate and completely misrepresent what they are to the world because you think you're smarter than everyone else when you're really not. You have a belief system just like we have a belief system. So there's nothing wrong with being an atheist, but if you're going to be an atheist, keep your hands out of my fucking belief system because I promise you, you are not ever going to understand it and you are the very last person in the world who should be explaining it to other people. I'm so disappointed in this. I'm so, I cannot even tell you how disappointed I am. Mind, reality, reality of the mind. It's literally in the name. However, the reason why the Marxists don't view it as mysticism is because they say that the dialectical method Marxists moves us think from about the abstract it. to the concrete. Oh my The reason God. why is because 
They are going from the spiritual mind to the material no, realm. Wrong. <laughs> which was wrong. created by the mind. <laughs> so they're going from the fantasy oh, to God. the real, from the idea no. to the mundane. Wrong. However, by confirming that they are going from the abstract to the concrete, they're admitting that they've started in the spiritual realm. Wrong. And have gone from that to the corporeal. Wrong. Therefore, Far from being non-mystical, they've brought God down to earth. Wrong. It's still religion because spirituality wrong. is at the heart and soul of it. completely wrong. No, it's and not. And Marx took Hegel's wrong. historicism and did the same thing, this time using economics as the basis for his study of society. But it went beyond this. The reason they were studying society was so they could... He hasn't defined dialectic. He's not talking about the dialectic. He's bitching and complaining about spiritual beliefs. He is not talking about what he claimed to be talking about in the title of this video at all. And no, we actually don't hear socialists say dialectic a lot on Socialism Saturday. He has actually said dialectic more in this video than we typically hear on Socialism Saturday in a good month, James Jones. Be intellectually honest about it because he is not talking about the dialectic right now. He is flat making shit up. Rottweiler says, I'm an atheist, and this is why I distance myself from the new atheist movement. You can thank Dawkins, Harris, Dennett, and Hitchens for this. Fuck Richard Dawkins. Honest to God. I don't understand the appeal of Richard Dawkins at all. I have never understood the appeal of Richard Dawkins. I think Richard Dawkins is an elitist snob douchebag who who gets off on trying to shit on people who have faith that are that are different than his. Like, if you want to believe in the flying spaghetti monster, go, bro, like, do your thing, man. It's not my life. I don't really care what you believe. But, like, when you spend your entire life just shitting on people because they believe in God, like... That's really, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Discover laws that could be used to predict the future. Marx claimed that they would eventually get to communism. But he could only make this claim because he had supposedly studied the dialectical processes of society. And this gave him the special Gnostic wrong. power to say how things will proceed from Made that on. up. Making shit now up, Now he got bro. it wrong because he based it all on the now-defunct labor theory of value. But it doesn't matter because millions of Gnostics continue to believe in the lie. And this, to me at least, They're not should Gnostics. be the wake-up call to all dialectics, Marxists mm -hmm. and third positionists listening to this. If you cannot predict what I'm going to have for breakfast tomorrow, then you can't predict the future of humanity. Nobody can predict the future. And the fact that you think you can is an indication that you've fallen into a cult. So it's time to take the red pill. It's time to wake up and Again, get out of... socialists are absolutely in a cult, but not for any of the reasons that this guy is saying. Socialists are 100% in a cult, but this guy has no understanding about why they're in the cult how the cult works, how the cult recruits people, how the cult gets people even more embedded in the cult. This guy is completely clueless about the mechanism of how this actually works. The Matrix. We live, necessarily, in a society of continual and unending change. Change that can never be precisely charted in advance. What? But how are they thinking that they can predict the future? Well, what they say is, we have this thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Did he just imply that Murray Rothbard was a socialist? Really? Trendelin, did you just see that? Did Rothbard is a libertarian. Rothbard is not a... Did he just literally imply that Murray Rothbard is a socialist? Yo. Trendelin. That was egregious. <laughs> and the synthesis is higher than the other two. This then becomes the next thesis. There is yet another antithesis to this new thesis, and thus... He quoted him in the context of, of he's presenting reasons why socialists are Gnostic. And then all of a sudden a Murray Rothbard quote pops up? He wasn't saying that Murray Rothbard was a libertarian. He was implying that Murray Rothbard was a socialist. 
Here, I'll show you again. He just implied that Murray Rothbard was a socialist. And the fact that you think you can is an indication that you've fallen into a cult. So it's time to take the red pill. It's time to wake up and get out of the matrix. We live, necessarily, in a society of continual and unending change. Change that can never be precisely charted in advance. See, look at that. Look at that. Is there any reference to, like, this is a libertarian philosopher and this is what, like, no, he's putting this in here, implying this is part of the socialist dialectic cult. What's how are they thinking that they can predict the future? Well, what they say is we have this thesis, antithesis, point. and synthesis, and the synthesis is higher than the other two. This then becomes the next thesis. There is I yet mean, another maybe, antithesis to this new that. thesis, sorry. and thus another synthesis again. But maybe and so what we're doing is constantly say, moving higher and higher and higher towards God. Hence the word progressivism, which is progress towards God. No, that's not now, what it is! progress into the land of Looneyville. You don't have to make progress towards God. You are already God. You don't have to make progress towards anything. You are already God. That is what generalized spiritualists believe. There is no need to make progress towards anything because you are already that thing. This guy is quite literally creating his own... Rea Tick history is quite literally creating his own fantasy universe that is not grounded in the reality of people who understand this stuff at all. West Virginia. And so we can't really call this progression at all. We've got a synthesis after synthesis. In other words, a wrong answer after wrong answer building up on top of one another in a giant pyramid of stupidity, the state. And what we're left with is one giant stinking pile of dung. Nonetheless, they call this progress. Well, now it's nonsense. Then he did a really shitty editing job in clarifying that because that wasn't what I got from it. He just slipped that in there with no reference at all. But maybe it's because I've already turned my brain off to him because I think that everything he's saying is wrong. <laughs> However, this nonsense allows them to say, okay, down the line. Yes, I, I have put in all the work. I have spent three years watching thousands and thousands of hours of this stuff publicly on the internet, dissecting every bit of it, doing it multiple times a week for over three fucking years, infiltrating their events that no one else went to, doing undercover journalism that no one else has done, dissecting this all publicly on my Substack, writing a whole fucking book about it. Yes, I've done the work. And I promise you, I've done more work to understand this than this guy has. And I don't even know anything about him at all other than he doesn't know what he's talking about. This will happen. Then this will happen, etc. And it's nothing more than a trick of the mind. It's a blatantly obvious fallacy. It's a trick. It's a trap. There is blatantly snake obvious oil, fallacy. An illusion. They are trapped in the wizard circle. The Gnostic snake that eats its own tail. Once you're in the circle, it's oh hard to come out of it. Oh my god. However, going back to the theory, there's two concepts that we need to discuss. One is dialectical materialism, and the other is historical materialism. Dialectical materialism is when the people bring about new social ideas, which turn into political ideas. Okay. So we form societies, and those societies I'm create on board the political with that. state. And the purpose of the Marxists is to accelerate the process to bring about the revolution. Yes. Which takes us to the next step Correct. in the chain of progress towards the end of history. No, wrong. Again, it's not the end of history. The they do not believe it's the end of history. Marxist historical materialism says that the chief determining force that changes society is the means of production, which is always a social thing, even Correct. though it's not. Hence the need to seize it. Men carry on a struggle against nature and utilize nature for the production of material values not in isolation from each other, not as separate individuals, but in common, in groups, in societies. Production. 
You do not understand what Gnosticism is. I promise you, you don't understand it. And, and, and what you think has no fucking relation to what generalized spiritualists like me and most of the people in the chat believe about the nature of God and the nature of our experience. If you've listened to what this guy has said on Gnosticism or what James Lindsay has said on it, you do not understand what you're talking about because you are listening to atheists talk about something that they don't understand, that they have no experience in, that they haven't learned from teachers at all, that they haven't even tried to understand themselves. And they're entitled to try to, to, to not involve themselves in this spiritual community at all. But don't pretend they know what they're fucking talking about because they don't. They don't. And I'm sorry, Kyle. But I promise you, you do not even understand what you're talking about right now or how it actually manifests in the actual belief system and the people who actually practice it. I promise you, you don't, bro. You can try me. I'll yell at you some more and continue to explain how you're wrong. But I promise you, you do not understand this. I can tell just by the way you wrote it. Naruto, off topic, I thank you for the super chat. A progressive recently wrote an opinion piece in Newsweek saying Joe Biden needs to step down. He's going to lose to Trump in 2024. Another topic for another day, Naruto. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Therefore, is at all times and under all conditions, social production. Self-employed people and sole traders don't exist, apparently. Because they want to get rid yes, of all there private are flaws property. In the theory. Anyway, historical materialists also believe that economics drives society and that if we understood economics, we can understand the laws of history, even though such laws do not exist. And after studying these laws, we can use them to predict the future which is simply another way of saying they're practicing divine revelation. Gnosticism. That's not, oh my fucking God. There are God. two more flaws in the theory, but... Oh. My. God. <sighs> That's not what that means. There's no need to get into them all here. You can pick this apart all day and the dialectics will just resort to calling you names. So it's a pointless endeavor. Well, what they'll call you names because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. You don't know what you're talking about. I promise you. You have no clue what you're talking about. This is where Hitler's struggle idea comes from. The struggle is the dialectic. Wow. It's the negation of the thesis and antithesis. For the Nazis, just like the Marxists, the world was in constant movement or constant flux as it moves towards the end stage of history. It's this process that Hitler is calling nature. But it's not real nature, it's, it's the nature he's dreamt up in his head. When I did my videos on the Gnosticism of National Socialism, some said that Hitler liked nature, and since nature is the real world, it's not some transcendent entity. Thus, it couldn't be Gnosticism because Gnostics hate reality. But that's a misunderstanding of the word uh, nature wrong. in the context of the dialectic. As James Lindsay says, Marxists share your vocabulary, but they don't share your dictionary. Exactly, bro. Exactly. That is a wonderful quote. Marxists share your vocabulary, but they don't share your dictionary. That is a fucking brilliant quote, and that is the truth. So why haven't you spent any time actually learning how to speak socialist? Why haven't you learned how to speak the language of the people you're talking about? Because it is blatantly clear to me, after immersing myself with these people pretty much nonstop for an entire fucking year, and not listening to any of this bullshit or right-wing interpretation of what these people are saying, you don't know how to speak socialist. So why are you pretending like you do? It just makes no sense at all. Well, historians are supposed to learn the language of the people that they claim to study. I'm sorry. Historians are supposed to learn the language. He knows they're speaking a different language. He just hasn't bothered to learn what the words actually mean. In fact, what really drives people towards cults is language, says yep. linguist Amanda Montel. Agree. My dad spent his teenage years in the late 60s and early 70s on a remote socialist compound called Synanon. 
that started out as an alternative drug rehabilitation center, but grew to accommodate so-called lifestylers or Americans who wanted in on the blossoming countercultural movement of the time. Children at Synanon were separated from their parents, she says, which is very similar to what Plato suggests. And to make it really clear for people who might be new and you don't understand why I'm pissed off, it's because things like this make it near impossible to educate the public about what's actually going on. People who teach people lies, who don't bother to research what they're actually what they're actually talking about, who make videos that are watched by tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that teach them things that are blatantly wrong. Do you want to know why we're losing to the far left? Because of people like this, because of people like this who are teaching the general public, who have these huge platforms to teach the general public about what's going on. And instead, they just spew mounds and mounds and mounds of bullshit that have no basis in reality at all. And then once those people finally come and find tiny channels like mine, they have to completely unlearn every single piece of bullshit that people like Tick History have taught them. It is it is a fight to get them to unlearn it because they want to believe that what their internet hero said is true when it's not true. It makes everything harder. It makes everything more challenging when people are doing shit like this. It's like this, this like watching stuff like this. I'm like, why do I even bother? Honestly, why do I even effing bother with YouTube? Because my Substack gets like 10 times the views that my YouTube gets. So like, why do I even bother dicking around making videos on YouTube that a couple thousand people are going to watch when someone like Tick History will make a video that is blatantly mischaracterizing like every single thing that we spend all day every day talking about and he's going to reach hundreds of thousands of people and my video is going to reach maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand. I can maybe reach 10,000, maybe 20,000 on a good day on my sub stack. But like, I can't get close to what these people have and they're misinforming so many fucking people and making this so much harder. It's like, why do I even bother? What is even the point? ...in his republic, which is where the origins of socialism come from. No one was allowed to go to school or work on the outside. At one point, everyone shaved their heads. At another point, couples were split up and reassigned new partners that the leader, Chuck Dedrich, approved of, a very appropriate name for a socialist leader since most of the priests are rich. The aim of my book is to break down some of these hard and fast linguistic techniques that all of these cultish groups use to manipulate, not just followers of groups like Heaven's Gate, but all of us to some degree. Cultish language works to do three things. The three C's, she says. It converts you, it conditions you, and it coerces you. My parents... Yep, all that is true, but that's not coming from him. Naruto, I'm a Christian. I understand Gnosticism better than him. Gnostics believe there's secret knowledge. You need to go to find it. That's not what you think. No, that's not what I think at all. That's not what I think at all. And he's completely mischaracterizing it because he doesn't understand it. Thank you for the super chat. They're scientists, and they will use jargon that I don't understand. But that jargon is there to make communication clearer. Cultish language has these ulterior motives, and it's there True. to make communication hazier. True. It's there to divide people, to shut down independent thinking. True. And that's how you know that language is cultish, when it causes strong emotional response, but you yourself have trouble translating what it is that you're saying. Questioning, scrutiny, pushback. These are the enemies of any cultish group that wants to remain an unchecked power. So, when anyone tries to express any dissent, you're going to need a roster of these catchy stock phrases in order to shut that person down. Like the word fascist, which is thrown about so loosely that I don't think anyone's not been called a fascist at this point. I would say, if a form of language cues you to have a strong emotional reaction... Well, but so Sarah with an H says he's part right about things. Well, he's not reading from his own work right now. He's reading from someone else's work. So the article that he's reading is absolutely correct. I have no problem with the article that he's reading. This ain't coming from him. This is coming from someone else. ...causes us to stop asking questions 
if it forces you to separate yourself from those who don't know how to use the language, if you find yourself becoming ideologically bound to a set of terminology filled with a sense of elitism just for showing up, those are some cues that you might be involved with a group that's a little too cultish for comfort. This last bit's important because I get dialectics in the comment sections all the time telling me, Tick doesn't know. Tick doesn't understand. Tick and never doesn't once know. have Tick they offered understand. an explanation. Oh, they I'll offer you many explanations. That they know, no sis, and act superior to everyone else. Oh, honey, you want to come on my channel? I will school you in every single way in which you do not understand what socialists say and what socialists think. And I will do so with clips to back up every single thing that I say. Don't, like, just Jesus fucking Christ. Everyone who, everyone who questions me doesn't know what they're talking about and they never have receipts. You want it? You want fucking receipts, bro? I will deliver you a mountain of receipts all in your lap and I will explain to you all the ways in which you do not understand spiritualist beliefs and ways in which they do not relate back to Marxism or socialists at all. Anytime, Tick. Anytime. You let me know. Oh, look at this. We got a nice socialist on the channel, Delia here. I reached out to Emily Drabinsky and I'm convincing her to press charges against you for recording her without your consent. You picked the wrong librarian to fuck with. See you in court. Well, good luck with that because New York has one party recording laws and Chicago recording laws state that you can record people when they don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy, which Emily Drabinsky did not do because not only is Emily Drabinsky a taxpayer funded public figure, but everything I recorded Emily Drabinsky saying, she said on a microphone into a crowded room of people which was also being recorded by the conference so you have good luck with that delia i'm sure you'll be really successful i am so 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 afraid of you assholes for why so delia why are you using the carceral state aren't marxists not supposed to believe in the carceral state if emily drabinsky presses charges against me for quoting her accurately when i was absolutely legally allowed to record her then she's using the carceral state, which means she doesn't actually believe in abolition, which means, FYI, she's not a real Marxist. You can go away now. Goodbye. I love it when when socialists like show themselves that they don't actually even understand their own ideology. Socialists don't believe in the police. Socialists want to abolish the police. Therefore, why would any socialist use the police against me for the crime of recording them when they're speaking into a microphone in a crowded room of people? Seems like that's not a very Marxist thing to do for me. Seems to me that uh, if Emily actually does that, Emily likes the police quite a lot and doesn't actually believe in the things she claims to believe. But I wouldn't mind exposing Emily for a shill. It'd be an interesting exercise. As if they're Aryan super saiyans or species beings, which is what Marx referred to the Aryan socialists as. These dialectics are in the cult. The Marxists, the fascists and so on are in the cult. And so nobody else can understand them. When I was a socialist, I knew what socialism was. But as soon as I lost my faith in socialism, suddenly I don't know what socialism is. Suddenly, socialism isn't state ownership of the means of production, despite the fact that every socialist prior to 1945 said it was. Why? Because now that I'm not in the cult, I can't know. I'm not allowed to know. Because I obviously am not part of the elite. I now don't have gnosis. I must be lying. I must only be claiming to have been a socialist because... Why would anyone abandon glorious socialism? Oh, and also, because I never explained what the dialectic is, that means I don't know what so it is. So you're working through your... Because obviously... You don't know what it is. You know, I've not sat here and played my banjo. You obviously that don't know... Means bro, I can't... bro, 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 bro. You obviously don't know what it is, and I don't know what got in your craw when you made this video, who hurt your fifis, but you obviously and clearly don't know what the dialectic is because you've spent exactly zero time of this 40-minute this video, of which we are 30 minutes into, explaining the dialectic, and the ones that you have tried to explain, you've gotten them wrong. So no, you don't know what you're talking about, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sure that hurts your feelings, but you don't know what you're talking about. 
play the banjo. I mean, I can only only play a couple of songs anyway. But obviously, just because I haven't said or done something doesn't mean I haven't said or done it. It does, it's just actually. Gatekeeping nonsense. No, it's reality. I don't understand bro. why, why anyone would fall world in which for you the understand dialectic. this when you don't. But I do understand what it is. No, you don't. And the point is, they're using a totally different language to us. Yes, they I'm are. I'm not going to pretend to understand it. this dialectic oh! language fully because, as I said in last week's video. Oh! Do you hear what he said? Do you hear what he said? They're using a completely different language to us. And I'm not going to pretend to understand that language fully. Thank you, bro. Half an hour into the video where I, I, I assessed at the beginning of the video that you didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. You come out and admit that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So why are you making videos for hundreds of thousands of people on the internet on topics that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about? But thank you for confirming that you made an entire video that you didn't know what the fuck you were talking about when I diagnosed that you didn't know what the fuck you were talking about within the first five minutes of the video. Don't ever doubt me again. So I've just discovered that when the Nazis say blood, he's just they making actually shit mean up. Spirit. Literally making shit up. We want to purify up. the blood is we want to purify the spirit. Even though I've been studying this for years, it wasn't obvious until I read Peikoff's book. Well, the same thing applies to the word nature. By nature, us normies think Hitler's referring to the real world outside where the animals live. That's not what he means. He's referring to the dialectical method itself. The dialectic dreamt up in people's minds casts its ideas into the material world. Mind makes material, material makes mind. So when he says nature, he doesn't mean nature. He means the dialectic, which he believes allows him to see the world correctly. Man has discovered in nature the dialectic, the wonderful notion of that almighty being whose law he worships. That's not what he meant. Fundamentally, in everyone, there is that's the feeling not... for this almighty. I'm sorry, like Hitler actually did believe in alchemy and that sort of stuff. I promise you, when he's referring to nature, he's not referring to the dialectic. That's not what that means. Thank you, Beth, for the super chat. I appreciate it. God damn it. How many, how many things can this guy get wrong in a single video? I just don't get this. Which we call God. That is to say, the dominion of natural laws, dialectic laws, no, throughout not the whole dial universe. That's not what he meant. Yeah, the dialectic are these natural laws. No. The dialectic, according wrong. to these priests, wrong. is behind everything. Wrong. God is the dialectic. The dialectic wrong. is God. Wrong. For the Marxists, when the dialectic gets them to the end stage of history, wrong. they will have the new Soviet man, a super being known as the species being, which is what Karl Marx called it. For Hitler, this nature or dialectic is the one determining which race is going to dominate the world. Hence, the folk concept of the world is in profound accord with nature's will, because it restores the free play of the forces which will lead the race through state. You know what? I fundamentally mistrust everyone with an accent now. I really do. Too many people are fooled by accents into believing that people are smarter than they than they actually are and that they do more than they actually are. I don't trust anyone with an accent now. Fundamentally skeptical, especially of the fucking British. Ages of sustained reciprocal education towards a higher type. The British are the key abusers Until of finally accents. finally the best portion of mankind will possess the earth and will be free to work in every domain all over the world and even reach spheres that lie outside the Earth. And it's not just Marx, and it's not just Hitler. It's Giovanni Gentile, it's Hegel, it's Lenin, it's Stalin, and Mao, and many more Marxists, fascists, and national socialists. It does vary depending on the particular person you're looking at and their brand of dialectic, but the principle remains the same. And here's the thing. When we look at the traditional political spectrum, you generally have communism on the left and capitalism on the right, supposedly. Yeah. Obviously, I now reject this, but let's just go with it for okay, the purposes of Okay, so you've made, up, you made up your own reality, Hitler got it. Hitler and Mussolini, the Nazis and the fascists, do not like either communism or capitalism. They saw these as what? Thesis and antithesis. 
Therefore, they synthesized them together in a new position. Yeah, their third position. A is. third position. Yes. This is where the idea of the fascist third way comes from. This is where the term... Third positionists are like a real thing. They're a weird form of white identitarians. I was researching them when I was digging into the actual white identitarians. There are books about this stuff. They're like, they're they're crazy. They're anti-Semitic. So I actually agree with his assessment on this, that they were they were third positionists. That they don't believe in in either the left or the right. That white identitarian group, the white well-being people that I researched a couple years ago, they believe the same thing. Third positionism comes from. They didn't pick the name at random. It's dialectical. And here's that has the nothing deal. to do with socialism. If you believe in the dialectic, then the third position is the future. They are the that synthesis. That doesn't apply the to Nazis socialists. And the fascists that doesn't apply to the socialists. The synthesis. Bro. So if you're a dialectic oh and you God. believe in this nonsense, you have to stop being a no. force of real. Third positionists are a specific thing, bro. They're not just everyone that you don't like. It is a very specific fascist, identitarian, anti-Semitic thing. Action, which is what the Nazis will call you, and get in line with the Nazis and fascists. You have to become a Nazi and fascist if you want to progress towards your end goal. You made your bed, and now you're going to sleep in it. And if you want to know why we have so much racism and genderism on the left, with all this nonsense coming out from them, and why Klaus Schwab is talking about stakeholder capitalism, which is just another name for fascism, the reason why is because they've realized this. Some Marxists have finally realized that their future, according to the dialectical religion that they worship, is third positionism. No, and so they're that's embracing it. Wrong. China wrong, has already wrong, gone that way. The wrong, European Union wrong, seems to be moving in that direction too, wrong, as does Canada the and the United States. About. They're all wrong, embracing fascism wrong, and national socialism, wrong. but trying to keep it international oh for now. And God. the reason why is because of their faith in the dialectical process. Now, what I'm going to do is leave you with a quote about Oswald Mosley, who was the leader of the British Union of Fascists. This quote is coming from a historian who recognizes some odd things about Mosley, but he can't explain it because he doesn't know what the dialectic is. I don't expect you to fully understand it either, but you'll certainly see where most of it's coming from. So here we go. In contrast to Spengler's pessimistic conservatism, Mosley believed fascism could renew European culture in a mutiny against destiny. Caesarism and science would evolve Faustian man and a civilization which renewed its youth in a persisting dynamism, constant movement towards the end stage of history. It would produce a final union of will with thought to a limitless achievement, a reunification of God. Fascism would create a society in which man could become like a god and control like a magician the forces of the universe. In a Probably mystical no, note, he told Peter Little that after the Caesarist stage, there would be eternal light. Thompson saw fascism as the 20th century expression of the will to infinitude, and Mosley as the leader who would transform the world. For Mosley, fascism would re-spiritualize the thought of the people this until right, the principles right. of religion return to their hearts. The militant service and mystical love. Blackshirt Olive Hawks recalled the desire to merge into the greater unit of nation or faith, which derived from fascism's spiritual instinct of self-sacrifice, which set them apart from people who drifted along. Fascism, Mosley preached, comes with the force of a new religion. It was infused with ritual as an alternative to Marxist faith. Its core was the idea of national rebirth, in which the individual would be fused with the mass to overcome oppositions between private and public, individual and collective. Again, a synthesis. It had the totalizing aim of a millenarian cult led by a charismatic leader whose dynamism was recharged in the liturgies of mass meeting where 
irrational forces of the chosen and the symbolic took over from individualism and rationality. There is a lot in here, obviously, and I hope I haven't lost many of you. And I also hope you're beginning to see why they That's were doing it. what they were doing and saying Bro. what they were saying. It's not random. It's their dialectical method, which was derived from... It is their dialectical method, bro, which you obviously and clearly do not understand. Let me explain something to you guys. There is a very specific reason that the only things that I look at in my work are practical, on-the-ground trainings. Things that happen in classrooms things that they talk about in coffee shops, things they do at their conferences, materials that they create for one another, things they do in, in colleges and universities, things they do in their clubs, things that they are actually teaching other people in the real world. Because when the only thing that you understand about an ideology is what the dead people said about it 150 years ago, you are not grounded into reality of what is going on today. The practical application of the ideology, what the activists are doing, what the activists are teaching each other, how they're advancing it through policy and procedures and laws and different organizations that they've created and how it impacts real people's lives is really all that matters. I'm sorry. So while I think that going through the academic literature and helping people to understand where these ideas are coming from is an inherently valuable thing. I think what James Lindsay does is incredibly valuable. The reality is that when you get to people like Tick History, and I'm sorry, James Lindsay is off the fucking reservation on the Gnostic stuff too. He doesn't understand it either. Like when you get to the practical application of it, there is a big difference between what Hegel wrote a hundred years ago and what real socialist activists are doing now. There is a big difference between what Marx wrote 150 years ago and what real Marxist activists are doing now. And just because you can cherry pick a sentence out of a paper that was written 75 years ago does not mean that one sentence that you cherry picked out of a paper to support a narrative that you are trying to sell has any relevance to what is going on in the real world now. On this channel, that is what we focus on. We listen to the real activists. We listen to the people who are teaching this to other people. We listen to the scholars in the classrooms. We watch university lectures. We watch their trainings. We look at their conference materials. We look at the organizations that they're building. We, we see how they are the practical implementation of their ideas in the real world, because that is all that matters. I'm sorry we had to endure that abomination, but I really thought it was going to be better. I really did. So many people have recommended Tick History to me. I could not be more disappointed in what I found. I will never pay attention to Tick History again. I'm sorry. That was a waste of two hours of my time right there, and I feel stupider for it. But what I do not. But but what's going to make me feel better is a community call with my supporters. So, guys, we will be gathering for our supporter call in just a few minutes from now. It starts at 7 p.m. If you are subscribed to the Substack and you want to join the call, what you need to do is go to yesterday's Unwoke Roundup email. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. When you get to this part that is covered by the red box on this screen, you can sign into your supporter account and you will find the Zoom link that you can join us on the call for. If you are a member of Locals, we will be posting the link there. Um, so you can come and join us on a call. We'll be on the call for about three hours. It is a, excuse me, a private unrecorded Zoom. We can talk about whatever we want to talk about. We can continue to bitch and complain about this if we want to, or we can talk about other things too. As a reminder, I also want to let you know Brennan says, thanks for giving him a try. I mean, I tried, man, but like, I'm sorry. Never again. Never again. Lesson learned. Um, also, make sure you are subscribed to the Substack in general, where you can support my work for $8 a month or $80 a year. But I also do have this free training coming up 
This is coming up next Wednesday. And if you really want to learn how to speak socialist, I mean the real stuff. You want to learn what the socialists mean when they say things like whiteness or gender binary or nuclear family or heteronormativity or homonormativity or like what the goal of queer theory is or or any of these things. I will teach you what the actual socialist dialectic is in a way that apparently no one else on the internet is doing because as I learn every day, I'm the only one actually listening to and doing deep dives into real socialist activists, which is terrifying to me that I'm the only one doing this and that everyone else is misinforming the public. But it is what it is, so I will do my best. Thank you for joining me here today, guys. Um, I'm wrapping it up today. I will be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Take care. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Bye.